use of personal cards instead of company credit cards is a weak, as opposed to a best, expense reporting practice. Yet it is tolerated in almost half of all organizations, despite the fact that these very same organizations have company cards. In this short episode, we're going to take a look at why this is such a bad practice and why it is tolerated. Stick around until the end when we share a really nifty trick that anyone can use to convince their travelers to use the company card even when the company doesn't mandate use of the company card instead of the personal card. Hi, guys. I'm Mary Schaefer, founder of AP Now, the place where you go for all the latest business intelligence you need if you work in, manage, or have responsibility for the accounts payable and or payment function. And of course, that includes expense reporting, expense reporting best practices, IRS compliance for your expense reporting plan, fraud prevention, etc. Now, let's start off with what I call the elephant in the room. I know that some of you are listening, who are listening, especially if you are in the group that likes using the personal cards, are skeptical and are grousing about why is she making such a big deal about this? And for that matter, why is she even mentioning it? And most of all, why is she calling this a worst practice? So let me explain. Problem number one is that by allowing employees to use personal cards instead of the company cards, you are creating extra work for your accounts payable group or the the expense reporting group who monitors uh, expense reports. Uh, Use of the personal card uh, means they have to be tracked. Uh, Somebody's got to run after them. It's a lot of extra work. That's that's number one. And and most of us, to be perfectly honest, don't have a whole lot of extra staff just hanging around with nothing to do. Okay, so there's the extra work. Now, even if you convince yourself that that's okay, that's not a big deal. Let me tell you problem number two. And maybe this is even a bigger issue. Problem number two is that use of personal cards instead of mandating company cards facilitates certain frauds. Um, I I could go into um, detail on what these frauds are and how they work. And if you want me to in a future episode, just make a note in the comments below. But I'm not going to do that. I hope you'll trust that I know enough about this stuff um, that I'm right. So it facilitates certain frauds. Now, obviously, all your employees aren't going to try and defraud you. Um, Only a few are, and you don't know who those few are. You may think you do, but in actuality, it never turns out to be the people who you think. Okay, I'm off on a tangent once again. So there are these are the issues that uh, many people, including those who advocate for the use of the personal card, don't realize. So why then do so many companies allow their employees to use the personal card instead of mandating the company card when they're traveling on company business? And um, FYI, how big a problem is this? Um, According to the AP Now survey. About half the companies out there have a company card, but still allow the use of the personal card. So the reason that's typically given given is that the employee wants to earn points, um, whether it's loyalty points for an airline or uh, for a hotel chain, or maybe even occasionally a teeny bit of cash back. But the the, co- the employee wants this this benefit, and the company thinks, well, why not? Let's be nice. Let's be nice to our employees, and that's great, except for you know the extra work and the fraud. Okay, the, and they don't take this into consideration. Another reason that this ends up flying in many organizations is because some of the employees who are using their personal cards and want to use the personal cards um, are on the management team, and they're the ones making the decision. So. Okay, you kind of in a hole. So what can you do? Management won't mandate the use of the company cards and persists on allowing the use of the personal cards. Well, I've got a nifty trick that will help you law all but the most committed uh, to turn uh, to company cards, even though management doesn't say they have to. But before we get to this, this tactic, if you like this episode, please give us a thumbs up. And if you love it, please Uh, subscribe. We produce new content for the channel three times a week. Tuesdays and Thursdays are devoted to payment and accounts payable issues, and Saturdays are reserved for fun and wordle. 
And by the way, we've got about 300 videos now on this channel. They're, most of them are pretty short, so I hope that um, you'll check some of them out. Now, let's talk about how you can get them to stop using the company card. The secret lies in receipts. So as you probably know, the IRS sets the level for which an organization must have receipts at $75. They did this, uh, by the way, in 1995. Now we can all do the math and we're approaching 30 years. But truth be told, very few companies have followed the IRS lead on this issue. Um, and in fact, more have gone the other way. When the IRS made this change, uh, most of the organizations were at $25. Um, and today, many are lower. And in addition to having a lower uh, receipt threshold, many also require the detailed meal receipts. Uh, we did a whole talk on this issue of uh, expense reporting trends related to receipts. Um, and it's in the, uh, the, the playlist related to expense reporting, um, which we'll reference at the end. And if you want to watch it, I also have a link in the show notes so you can watch it after you finish with this. Anyway, again, I digress. Uh, suffice it to say that uh, today's companies are requiring more receipts than ever to the consternation of their employees who are forever losing them, crumpling them, and worse. And herein lies the solution to this continued battle of company cards versus per personal cards. If management won't go along with the best practice of mandating use of the company cards for business travel, and we know that half of them won't, you can do, you can do this. Change your receipt requirements as follows. It's going to be a two-tiered step. Number one, employees who use the company card are only required to return in receipts for purchases over $75 the IRS limit. You can't make it any higher than that. Those who insist on using their personal cards can do so because let's face it, management won't let you change that, but they must also turn in all receipts. So as personal, as, as employees who continue to use these personal cards get disgusted with all these little receipts and they lose them, over time, many will switch over to the company card. It's just easier and there aren't so many receipts to keep track of. Yes, you are making their lives more difficult. But remember, they're making the lives more difficult of your accounting team or your accounts payable team or your expense reporting team because they are insisting on using their own card. Okay, so hopefully, you know, you can both get on the same page. Use of personal cards isn't the only expense reporting practice of a questionable nature, shall we say. We recently did a broadcast on eight such practices. I've got eight fingers up, I think. Well, you can watch it right now using a link that will appear momentarily on YouTube and is in the show notes below. As always, we greatly appreciate your thumbs up, your subscribes, your shares, and your comments. Good luck.